Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Avatar The Last Airbender Book 3 episode number 9 and 10. Alright, the previous two episodes. Um, episode number uh, 7, it was uh, basically Katara and Toph focused on both of them and how their way, like you know, they had like a little squabble between them again. And but you know, like Toph being the person who loves freedom and Katara who kind of tries to keep everyone online, you know, they had like a little disagreement. Toph kind of got way overboard with the like you know, uh, scamming people thing. <laughs> and Katara was went a little overboard with like you know, trying to stop her and like you know, control her everything. That's why they had a little like you know, miscommunication and by the end of it like you know they kind of talked about it and everything was all well and good and you know katara uh sh showed very you know like what can i say used her sweat to actually uh get out of a messy situation and we also met that other guy uh, the guy who's following them and we, i think we kind of realized his weakness the you know the painting in his head i'm not sure what that is about you know because i think that's a painting that's obviously not a real eye so maybe we'll get to know in the future what that was about and that was episode 7 episode 8 was one of the best episodes you know in after it was like it showed us blood bending how it is kind of uh, like you know what can i say like uh, it basically goes against morals and ethics of people like you know whenever you hear blood bending it kind of sounds evil and it is a little bit evil you know because like they're using blood to control you and who knows maybe you can if they can even kill you using their blood stopping your blood within your veins and stuff like that they can do so like hama's main goal was actually making katara use blood bending and she succeeded in that that's why she gave that last smirk and she was like yeah my job is done but and katara also broke down and but for me like you know at least i think about it in this way like if you actually use something for the good you know like um i think like you know they're like you know they're, like katara as soon as she used blood bending she thought that she stooped to hama's level and she thought that she would probably become a monster like hama in the future because of that you know like once you go down the path of like you know of a, 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 once you go down the wrong path you might not be able to come back but i think that probably probably would never happen because everyone is there with her you know katara uh, Ang, uh, Tov, Saka, you know, everyone is there with her. They won't let her go walk that wrong path. And if she uses it for the betterment of people, for helping people and for like, you know, other stuff, good stuff, then yeah, like nothing's wrong with learning a technique, you know? Who knows, maybe this technique will save someone in the future. So I hope Katara doesn't take it to, uh, you know, like become too sad or something after that. Hope she, her mental strength is well and good enough in this episode we'll see in this episode how she reacts to stuff so yeah without further ado let's get started this is episode number nine of after the last airbender book three i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it whichever is the preference and let's get started all right so here's the countdown three two one go <sighs> hmm All right. <clears throat> All right, let me take this off in case of any spoilers. All right. I wonder what they're going to do now, like, uh, I don't know, I have no idea, because I'm, I'm sure they'll probably address the whole Katara situation after, like, you know, the previous episode, what happened with Katara, and how she is now, how she's taking all of this, so, yeah, okay. Nightmares and daydreams. 
Oh, what are the sheep? <laughs> I was like, ah, my friends. <laughs> oh, wait, what? Okay. <laughs> wait. Yeah. It's oh no. Okay. <laughs> Damn, I think Ang won't be able to sleep. Uh you know the pressure, like everything like he's after, so Oh no. Is this his dream? Yeah. What the? Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> oh, great. Look at the fire lord. Wait. <laughs> Wait, is this supposed to be? Oh my god. Aang has weird dreams. But you know what? Dreams are weird, so... Is that like a, I don't know, Goku parody or something? I don't... I don't even know which came before, Dragon Ball Z or Avatar? <laughs> no, you, you better get some sleep or else... Wait, what? Ah, oh, poor Momo. Oh my god, what the? <coughs> Damn, Zuko's living the life! <laughs> wow. Wait, what's happening? Is, is this a dream? I think this is a dream. I think this is a dream. Yep, it's a dream. Oh, maybe not. Oh, maybe not. I thought it was a dream. Okay, it's not a dream. I thought it was a dream for a second. Wait, what? That... Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> Ooh, Ang! Damn, so many leaves he has, like, you know? <laughs> All night? Oof. Yeah. Uh, yep, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't have enough sleep. Oh, okay, Sakura. You... <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and you're going way overboard now. Okay, go get some sleep. <laughs> They're already asleep. Oh my god, I shouldn't laugh. He's like, you know, like he's struggling to sleep. Oh great. Yeah, if, if you near sleep, this happens. I, I doubt you'll be able to sleep. Oh my god. 
I think these are like references to some kind of parody. Ah! <laughs> oh no. Great. I don't blame you, Aang. Everyone forgets about Masters. <laughs> Wait, is he, is he going to start <laughs> mathematics? Like one little sheep, two little... Oh my god, there you go. <laughs> oh no. Aang is going crazy. <laughs> yeah, there's no math test. Mm. <laughs> oh my god, Zuko. Okay. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I guess, because that's true. Oh, no. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, this is too funny. What the hell is this? <laughs> Imagine the whole side coming. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see. Master Rock Climber Saka. Okay, Ang. Ang <laughs> train. Ang Ang is going crazy. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Get some sleep. Oh my God, Saka is still. <laughs> Saka, get. You need to start training, I guess. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, Saka, you're not you're not making it better. Yeah. <sighs> oh my god. All right. Okay, that water. I think that the thing she did. Oh. Oh. Okay. Never mind. <coughs> oh my god. <coughs> Um. <laughs> yeah, because you're in the... Okay, never mind. This is a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, Saka. <laughs> okay.
Hmm. Iya. <laughs> <Yeah. Hello. laughs> Oh my god. <clears throat> well, that didn't help. <clears throat> Wait, is this Azula? Oh my god, she is. Hmm. <clears throat> oh, okay. <laughs> Great. <clears throat> oh my god. Well, Azula played you. She knew you would act like this. Oh no. Oh, oh. Oh yeah, yeah, the <coughs> the wound in her in his back. <coughs> what? No, oh my god. That's not how acupuncture works. <laughs> Well, he cares. Hmm. <laughs> um. Oh boy. Well, at least she, she was trying her best, you know, to cheer him up. <coughs> okay. Maybe. <coughs> oh no, he is not alright. Let's see what dream he has now. Oh! Whoa, what the? Oh, great. <coughs> what? <coughs> oh, no, what? <laughs> great. This got better. <laughs> what type of horror movie is this? Hmm. <coughs> oh, great, Zuko. <coughs> and the comet. <laughs> wow. Well, dreams are random like this, you know? You see weird stuff. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no. <coughs> Train. Oh, great. <laughs> well. <coughs> Ang Ang is not ready for the invasion. <coughs> no, it's it's actually <coughs> yeah. <coughs> what? <coughs> yeah. 
Oh, damn. Um. Whoa. Oh, it, this is a dream, I think. Or maybe not. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Whoa. Hey. <laughs> what? What the? Oh, yeah, this is a dream. Okay, there you go. For a moment, I thought it was real. <clears throat> oh, nightmares and daydreams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> The meeting. Oh, that, wait, what? Really? Okay, that's nice. <coughs> wow. Simulation training. Oh boy. Yeah. <clears throat> Damn, he's missing. He's so sleepy and he's so tired that... Yeah. <clears throat> what the... Wait... <laughs> Is this again him, him dreaming? <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you stay like that, Momo. <laughs> He's actually talking to him. Yeah, I think you should be a lot worried about him. <laughs> what is this? Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, what should we do? <laughs> wow! <laughs> this is the funniest episode of this whole series. Like, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> uh, oh my god. <laughs> wow. Damn, Momo's. <coughs> yeah. Oh, great. Guru Patik is here as well. Wow. <coughs> God. Oh, great. Ozai is. This feels like some weird video game you were in, you know? <laughs> video game dream, dream sequence. <coughs> oh, boy. Okay. Enough laughter. Most. Okay. Huh.
Okay. Well, he's starting to understand, you know. What the? What now? Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. <laughs> Poor. I think uh, the fact that he has not learned firebending is bothering him so much. No. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> there you go. Positive reinforce. Uh, like you know, the thing that Katara said in one of the previous episode. He works well with positive encouragement. Yeah. All right, go to sleep. Oh no. Okay, stop, enough. Guess what, I have a spare pan. <laughs> oh, whoa. Uno reverse card. <laughs> Damn, the ultimate Uno reverse card. <laughs> wow. Oh boy, this. Okay, this. This is one of the best episodes. Oh boy. Uh. uh my God. <laughs> Oh, this was so great. I, I have to say, like, you know, like, this is the ninth episode of the third season. Up till now, this is definitely the funniest episode. Like, <laughs> the execution of the com comedy is just so, so great. Like, I, I lost it at that part when Ozai came <laughs> and started waking him up. He was like, Aang, wake up. <laughs> You missed the invasion! <laughs> As if like, you know, in like in some uh, rom-com anime, how like how your childhood friend comes <laughs> and wakes you up from your sleep and tells you that you're late for school. Just like that, Ozai comes and Ozai is like, <laughs> wake up, Hank, you're late. <laughs> oh my god, I lost it at that scene. God, what, what was this episode? <laughs> it's, it's so good. <laughs> okay, I think... <laughs> We, like, you know, there's nothing much to discuss about this episode. Uh, the only section that we need to discuss about is uh, <clears throat> Zuko's part. But obviously, first of all, let's... <clears throat> okay, so... Aang is stressed out very much. And I think, like, the main reason for him being so stressed out is obviously because he's concerned about the fact that he'll have to fight <coughs> the Fire Lord. But <clears throat> I think another thing that is probably bothering him a few things are actually bothering him. Number one, I think he has not learned firebending. And, you know, like, <clears throat> I think that's something that is really probably bothering him. I'm not sure. Because, you know, after, unless and until you, like, all the four elements are in harmony within you, you won't be able to, I guess, unlock your full power or something like that. At least I think of it in this way. <clears throat> so... You know, he he barely knows firebending. The, the only time he learned a little bit firebending was... Um, I don't remember the, that guy's name. Uh, the guy from... Was it season 2 or 1? I don't even remember that. But you know that guy where... <coughs> who taught him for just the basics. And he, he mistakenly burnt Katara's hand. So <coughs> that's the basic knowledge of firebending he has. And... Yeah, and another thing that is, I, I think, probably the reason for his stress is because he was unable to open all the chakras. Uh, you know, because he was unable to give up on Katara. And the second time when he actually tried to do so, he was struck down by Azula. <clears throat> so it was like incomplete. He wasn't able to unlock that potential, that Avatar state thing that 
he was supposed to unlock so that's probably another thing that's bothering him and you know like i mean these are the two main stuff that is the actual reason for his stress and even without those you know like it's it's a big thing like you know like you'll have to fight the <clears throat> strongest enemy you know the strongest enemy in this world you'll have to fight that person after four days so obviously that in itself is a source of big stress and he like you know like he just came here and there's like four days just waiting nothing to do and it's going to eat at you obviously because like you know you are the like ang is the main player here ang is the main main guy on whose shoulders everything is <clears throat> you know uh, fallen upon and he's just a kid so you know like for four days just sitting around like this doing nothing and just like you know waiting for that day to come yeah it's 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 a pretty <clears throat> very much stressful situation and like if they were involved in something else you know like if they were <clears throat> i don't know doing something else and they re reached here uh with one day or on the day of the invasion i think ang would probably <clears throat> wouldn't have been that much stressed out because he came here the first thing that he says here is like when he arrives at that play at this place and you know like he like you know like then saka says that we have four days left for invasion ang is like four days like my god like <clears throat> there's, there's not enough time for me to learn everything and that and also like you know like he, he's just sitting here for four days and that was probably really bothering him he's like yeah like i have so much to learn i don't know anything but at the same time like you know we are just here um waiting doing nothing so i should probably not sleep i should probably use this time you know as good as i can so yeah let's just skip sleeping and let's just try and even if he tries to sleep he cannot sleep because you know like the, those weird dreams and obviously the comedy section as i said explained it was fantastic like you know ozai's appearance was probably the best thing in this episode ozai coming in and waking ang up for the invasion and saying that yeah you're late dude <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> and you know all the other stuff were amazing as well the whole section with appa and momo suddenly starting talking with <laughs> ang and appa and momo kind of like you know having like a samurai showdown and uh, you know like and ozai's tree started dancing <laughs> like that was that was completely crazy and this this, this episode is so crazy that it's, it's so good and <clears throat> Yeah, okay, like that was that and okay, let's talk about Zuko now. Zuko here, uh, one thing that I was really, I think, surprised here in this episode was uh, Mai. Mai, she, I think she, she's actually trying to change now, you know, because in, in the previous episode, in, in that episode where, in the beach episode, you know, the way Zuko kind of told her that, oh, like, you know, like the way they confronted each other's, um, thing in their heart like you know their feelings uh where my said something like yeah like i have been controlled throughout my life i was silenced i didn't have anything to say you know my mom and dad were just like you know suppressing me but i had everything in, like you know throughout my life but i i was just i had no like you know freedom in that thing so and like you know zuko also kind of said that uh, like they had like a little squabble that's, if, if you can remember like you know like i think zuko zuko said it didn't he yeah that uh like you don't feel anything you know like like everything is just like you know boring for you like you you, you don't care about anything you don't have any feelings and i think that probably kind of you know like made her change a little bit in this episode because here we can see that she's actually trying to keep up with zuko here you know, because if you remember in one in the in the first episode where we see him and Zuko together, when Zuko was saying something about like you know his struggles and stuff like you know in a philosophical way, Mai was like, eh, I don't care, like you know, like why are you saying this to me? So, 
like you know that episode and this episode where Zuko again confronts like you know he's talking about his problems but here Mai actually responds to it and like you know talks with him and tries to actually help him support him here and <clears throat> that's like a big contrast with that episode and this episode and we can see that probably that beach episode and Zuko kind of actually saying everything that he had in his heart about Mai probably made Mai change uh, like you know <clears throat> in this episode and here she really tries to help Zuko with stuff and but you know like it, it won't actually help here because even though you know like you can see in this episode Zuko has everything like like just standing around people servants coming giving him stuff and like you know like well, what was that what was it called i forgot the name uh Bella? well okay uh palanquin okay that's the name uh yeah like taking a palanquin to just go to your neighbor's house like you know like these type of things these type of privileges these type of comfort luxury just getting everything he has everything he is loved by people like you know people are just swarming around the house chanting zuko zuko prince zuko you know he got his honor back he he has everything so but he still is lacking something all this time he like you know even in that episode uh, scene where he goes to azula and says that like oh you didn't um like you know like bother inviting me and azula's like like just like you know if you want to go you can go like why even ask you're the prince for god's sake like you know like uh, we don't think we need like you need an official invitation and <clears throat> He's like, no, I'll not go. And like, you know, these type of things. So even after that, like, you know, like they kept a place for him and he got everything. He like, you know, like the, the servants come and says that, like, we're waiting for you. Come and then we'll like, you know, like start the thing. Like your dad is waiting for you. All that stuff is like, you know, happening. And then Zuko goes. And OK, where was that scene? Uh, after that when he comes out and like you know Mai asks him like what happened he's like yeah like everything went so well he wanted me next to him i was literally his right hand man and then he says that i was perfect the son my father wanted but i wasn't me and i guess he's understanding it now you know like what he really wants and you know what like what so many people has actually been trying to tell him not so many people two people you know one is obviously Iroh like Iroh has always been trying to uh, you know like like make Zuko realize this and another person is who is not with him now but his mom you know his mom if you remember his mom also kind of said something when she went away like I don't know where she went you know but the last time that she met Zuko she said something like always like you know be a good person Zuko you know and like that thing like this thing like he and obviously as I said mostly the thing that uh, the the major part of this thing that the person who wanted him to realize this was Iroh but I don't like you know it's locked up now so with you know like with the lack of that one person who always used to tell him always used to steer him towards the wrong direction I think he's actually realizing now and I think this is like the perfect example of you know that saying that you realize someone's worth once they're gone he he started realizing what Iroh has been trying to tell him for so long after he's gone after he's not with him you know because he has to think for himself now and he's realizing it and <laughs> i'm really interested in how zuko will actually what zuko will do and what decision he'll take because it seems that he like i don't know like 
the, the whole feeling is like he's not happy with what's happening you know but at the same time he he's having a good time in in the kingdom you know because you know he's respected and everything but he's missing something still so i'm quite curious as to how what what he's going to do after this what decision will he take and yeah like i'm sure we'll get to see something in the upcoming episodes and uh, yeah that was that and we see like as i said we see like a considerable change in zuko in this episode and he's starting to realize stuff so let's wait for the you know upcoming episodes and see what happens after this and and in the end you know as as we see ang kind of gets his sleep and the positive you know encouragement that katara said in one of the previous episodes that he he really does well with positive encouragement that's what she did in the end she was like you're smart you're brave and strong enough to handle this you're okay you're fine nothing will be the problem now just go to sleep and <laughs> In his dream, Ang is like, yeah, you're right. And Ang <laughs> pulls out the Uno reverse card in front of Ozai in his dream. And he defeats Ozai in his dream. And he gets a good night's sleep and rest. <laughs> oh, and oh, and that scene where, like, you know, he kind of starts talking with Katara. And, like, you know, he's like, I like you and all that stuff, you know. For a moment there, I thought that... <laughs> that was really happening i was like damn so that means like he all he needed to do was <laughs> was not sleep and you know like he would go so uh, you know like he would become so tired and start seeing things that he would actually blurt out his feelings for katara in front of her and probably that's the push that he needed but then i realized that nah it's it's just a dream again and like you know like even though he <laughs> In his daydream, he was able to do that. And when he snapped out of it, he's like, ah, I was underwater, you know. <laughs> and makes a weird excuse to Katara. Oh, boy. But, yeah, that was fantastic. I loved this episode. And, <laughs> damn, like, the funniest episode. Like, I don't know if there will be any other funny episodes like this uh, <clears throat> in the... What do you call it? In the upcoming 11 episodes are left, I think. Yeah, in the upcoming 11 episodes. But for now, th this holds the top spot. And <laughs> yeah, let's see. Let's see if there's any episode that can top this one. In, in the funny department. So yeah, anyways, that was it. So let's start with episode number 10. Uh, so yeah, I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference. And let's get started. All right, so here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> I think this episode is another uh, two episode. No, like two episodes are merged together. I think this episode. So, yeah, I'll have to stop in the middle, you know, because this is episode 10 and episode 11 I'll react to in the next week. So, uh, let's see, anyways. <clears throat> Alright, let's take this off. Oh, no, wait, what? The Day of the Black Sun Part 1 Invasion. Yeah, Part 1. Okay, I'll have to stop in a weird section. I guess it'll be some kind of a cliffhanger or something when I'll have to stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he... Oh! Oh really? I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh wait, what? Oh okay. Oh nice. 
Oh boy! <laughs> Dorf made a dog. Oh. Oh my god! This is swamp people. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Oh, this guy. What was his name? Oh, yeah, yeah. Haru. Oh, that's it for dad. Oh my god. Um Ah wait what what's he doing here? What? What made you change? Oh Oh no is this oh uh, yeah I'm the doctor. I can't remember his name but Oh there he is. What? <laughs> Sauce. <laughs> okay. Ooh, a new. Oh, nice. Oh. Snack compartment. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Maybe you'll f be hungry while flying. Oh, here we go. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> This, this person is nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Saka, Saka's in charge. Oh! Well, never mind. It happens. <laughs> okay. Ah. No. Yes. Oh no. The beginning, yes. <laughs> yes. Damn. Oh, yeah, okay. Ooh. Damn. Oh, they're, they're starting it before the... Okay. No. Yeah, it'll take time to go there. It'll take time to go there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and Oza is there as well.
I don't think it will happen like that easily. Oh boy. Nice. Oh, look at that far. Ooh. Ah, nice. Oh, Angus, yeah. Wow. What the? Where's Momo? Okay. Is he writing a letter to uncle? Oh. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. The strategy is yours. Hmm. Yeah. Hopefully it goes well. Like, I don't know. Like, we have nine, like, 11 episodes left, so... I wonder how this is going to go. Swamp Enders. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. Ah. Oh. Oh, no. Oh my god. Yep, okay, this great. Oh boy. Wait, how did they notice that someone is approaching? Like there was an alarm that went off. Oh no, oh no. Oh, the, wait, the, the. Oh, the. Surprise. Oh, there you go. Nice. Damn. So this is invasion. Sub, uh, invention. Submarine. Oh, look at Appa. Damn. <laughs> Helmet. Damn, Sakai in, like, invented the submarine. Like... Wow, Saka. <laughs> oh no, what? Oh. Oh no. Oh my god. <laughs> What? Wait, is he planning something? Is he planning to break out or something? I think so. Or maybe... 
but does he know that oh never mind does he know that uh, ang will attack like yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> All right. Okay, this time it's not a dream. <laughs> Damn, this is this is very like you know using Appa to <laughs> go underwater. Using an air bubble. Oh, is he like leaving or something? Wait. I think so. So he just, he's just straight up going to leave like that? <laughs> there you go. As I said. Damn, they're not, they'll be not, they'll not be expecting a submarine, you know, like this is a completely new concept. Oh boy. Oh, this will be good. Okay, they realized. Ooh, but we're in. That's all that matters. Oh. Nice. Oh. Oh, it. Okay, get out. There you go. Nice. Oof, a little more. Oh, tor oh my God. Yo. <laughs> Wow, that's really oh boy, look at this. It was frozen in ice and damn Damn Saka comes up with some real amazing, you know Ah, we're in All right Oh Oh, come on. Oh, look at that. Wow. We are ready this time. Oh. Oh, oh, okay, there you go. That's what they're going to do. Nice. All right. Okay, these things again. Do we have a way to counteract this? Oh! Wow. Wow, there you go. 
they have a way to counteract that. What are the what can the swamp benders see? Oh, there you go. We have water with us. Ooh, <laughs> nice. Oh. Oh, they oh they brought okay nice. <laughs> Won't work. <laughs> okay, nice. Okay, yep. Oh, damn. Ooh, there you go. Look at Saka. Oh, nice. Ooh, good. Ooh, oh my god. Uh, <laughs> well, glad he's okay. Oh, okay. All right, there you go. Nice. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> Damn, this is really cool. They are just, you know, like strategically doing stuff. Okay, let's go. Nice. Okay. I hope his dad is okay. Oh! Um, I think he's fine. There you go. Is he okay? Oh no. Wait, what happened? Wait, isn't he like the, the invasion is happening now? So, okay, what happened to okay? Yeah, Katara can heal him. I forgot about that for a second. All right. Mm, Saka can Come on Saka Yeah, there you go And not, not that <laughs> Yeah Yeah <laughs> All right, let's go. Okay. Wait, so where's Ang? Like, like, where is he? Who? Appa. I'm really happy that Appa is no more fire uh, afraid of fire. All right. Okay. Oh, it's a lot inside. Okay, I was thinking like, oh, there, there, Ang, there's Ang. Like, I was thinking like, um, why is Zuko not like you know, getting alerted for about these stuff and.
Wait, what? Yeah, everything's empty. Um, what? No one's here. Whoa, but people are here, so why is no one inside? <laughs> Not working. Oh, are these water? Yeah, I think so. Oh no, never mind. Okay, I, I, you know what? I think they're actually being lured into a trap or something. Oh, maybe they actually anticipated this because, you know, like, they also know that they'll be weak during the eclipse. What is even happening? What? He's not here. What? I think, yeah, that's it. All right. Um, wait, that was, um, okay. So Uzai is not here. Like, where are they even? Like we saw in the previous episode that Ozai like, you know, called Saka, uh, not Saka, uh, Zuko inside to like, you know, uh, for the meeting and stuff. So like, you know, Zuko and Ozai are at the same place. And seeing how Zuko, yeah, like seeing how Zuko is not being alerted because of the invasion, you know, like, I think they're not here. That, that means where are they? And like, now that I think about it, I've never thought about this before. It's, it's kind of weird why I never thought about it. The thing is that I'm sure that the Fire Nation people also know that during the eclipse they're weak. So I'm sure they have some kind of a uh, um, countermeasure for that. So, like, you know, like, I don't know why I never thought about it. But all this time I've been thinking like, yeah, just like how Aang and they're like thinking that, yeah, during the eclipse we'll be able to easily overpower them. Why did I never, never even think about the fact that this thing, the Fire Nation knows the most because they are affected by the Eclipse and so won't they actually take some kind of countermeasure for it? Like I never thought about it and like all this time I've also been thinking like yeah like they might be able to take down, at least not take down but deal some damage to the Fire Nation during the Eclipse. So we'll see in the next episode. It'll will explain but okay so here in this episode we see the preparations of each and everything and it was so cool to see so much like you know so many things and so many new you know like them actually strategically uh counteracting different like you know situations and everything uh the the fact that saka was able to <laughs> invent a submarine is a pretty damn big deal like this is like, you know, he actually invented, he actually, uh, like, you know, came up with the concept of a submarine. Like, just imagine that, you know? And, like, yeah, like, obviously, like, Saka is the most intelligent out of all of them. Especially to us, like, for stuff like this and for making plans and strategies. He's, he's the best. So, and here we meet a lot of people that we've previously got acquainted with. For example, um the hippo the the guy and the other guy i can't remember his name uh, and then the swamp people haru uh the the, the doctor uh, like, you know the guy uh the doctor guy who makes the invention all these different peoples we met in this like, you know episode we got like, you know we were able to meet them again and all of them are actually ready to fight with us. <clears throat> and like another thing that was happening in this episode was um, Iro, Iro telling um, what was the name of the girl? So, no, 
I can't remember that 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 girl uh, who um just a sec Ming okay Ming that's her name uh Ming uh we can see that how Ming is like you know nice to um, Iroh and like obviously like I like you know like Iroh was I'm sure there's a lot of people who really loves Iroh because he's such a nice guy you know only people who are just petty and like you know who like pe people like that guy the guy who like trash talks Iroh all the time you know sitting in front of his uh, uh holding cell uh people like him who are just petty and selfish and like you know like filled with envy jealousy those type of people are people who just like you know like try to uh, act tough in front of him and you know insult him and do stuff like that so those are just petty people but people who are genuinely nice you know in the fire nation i'm sure there's a lot of people who actually really loves iroh and who probably got so disappointed when they realized that iroh won't be able to uh like, you know uh become fire lord and then he gets captured by you know the fire nation people i'm sure a lot of people got disappointed with that and the people who really respects iroh and ming is probably one of them so like the thing that iroh actually says in this episode to ming is that don't come back here you know take a break today you know be sure to take a break and it kind of, I guess, implies that Iroh is planning something. I don't know what he's planning. Is he planning to break out of it, this place? Or does he actually, um, is he actually thinking about something else? Because it does make me feel as if he's actually planning to break out. Because, you know, he, he's been training and, like, you know, kind of keeping himself fit and getting ready for something. So I'm guessing he's actually trying to, plan to break out. And I'm sure that if Ming was, like, you know, situated, came here during the time when he tries to break out i would have probably had to take ming out and another thing would happen that would be like if when people like you know when the file will get to know that um Iro escaped the blame would probably fall on the person who was in charge that would probably be ming and she would probably be punished even killed so that's why i guess Iro said repeatedly to her that don't come today because the other guy will be in charge, I guess, or someone else won't, will be in charge. And if Iroh actually breaks out of it, he can just knock them out, go away. The Fire Nation will be informed and I guess, like, you know, the punishment will fall on those people, not me. The person, the only person who has been kind to him, that person will be fine, you know. So I guess that's why Iroh repeatedly told her that don't come today. I think so, at least because you know that's how it feels like so yeah okay that was that and then like you know like we get start with the preparations we get the submarines we see appa having a new armor you know like the way they actually use appa as like a, as a submarine you know katara kind of makes an air bubble and like so many like you know cool stuff we see in this episode and you know and then like you know in the final scene like ang actually was able to confess to katara and yeah that was good and then we see them actually going in using the submarine little problems were happening one submarine kind of got captured but katara was able to take care of it and i was really impressed with the way they used the torpedoes they were actually freezing it i think and I think they used water bending to actually boost, was, or was it earth bending to boost it? I think it was water bending, wasn't it? Yeah, most probably to boost it and just like you know, like go and you know, like blow the place, they blow the gates, and then like you know, the way they actually counteract each and every situation, like it really shows that Saka made such a great plan. He he was ready for everything. And because we got invaded before, we have all the information about their different vehicles, the strategies they use, how you can counteract that. We all have information about that. So different stuff, like, you know, those little things that from where fire was, like, you know, coming out uh, are those, those cars that looked like some kind of caterpillar, you know, they kind of stomped on them. And, you know, like they had like little uh boulders as well ready to just earthbend them and like you know snipe the towers 
and then we had the seaweed monster i can't remember the name they called it but that thing you know uh, that the guy was controlling and we can see that Saka was a little like, you know disappointed with the way he was unable to actually uh you know take lead but as ang said that your job is not in front of a board explaining to people what to do your job is in the battlefield so don't you feel like, you know bad i'm sure you'll be able to do it and you know here we see how Saka takes control of the whole situation and he's like oh my god the noise um, and he's like yeah so great i'm getting distracted by the noise outside i'm sorry guys um <clears throat> so yeah and he takes control of the whole situation he says that you know what dad you rest i'll be able to handle it and yeah oh. and i'm sure he'll be he'll do fine because he's a he's a he he has brains he he thinks and, he, and he's able to make decisions quickly and swiftly and intelligently so i'm sure he'll be fine and then the weird thing that starts after that ang comes to the inner chambers and it's empty and so what the hell is happening did they relocate somewhere or are they somewhere else did they know this is going to happen was this like a trap are they actually being lured into a trap so many questions and you know what it actually won't surprise me if this was a trap laid by the fire nation where they're actually luring them in because they know that the eclipse is the part where they're weakest and they actually anticipated them coming to attack them that's why they like, you know, made this plan to lure them in or i don't know or just throw them off you know and they're somewhere else so it won't actually surprise me if that was the case and i was actually thinking like you know like i was thinking like this is the ninth episode and like you know has still not learned firebending and like you know why is the invasion happening now this quickly like what's going to happen after this like we have so many episodes left so what what's what's up with this i'm guessing this this plan will probably fail you know and it will probably be something like you know like they are going to go in and they are going to see that the fire nation actually tricked them they just put in a few soldiers over here and they're somewhere completely else and they'll be waiting for the eclipse to go away that's what they're going to do because by the time like you know ang and their crew will realize that we have been like you know baited here and there's actually no one this was just like a distraction if eclipse will come and it will go away and they'll be too late to actually try to find where the fire nation is i think that's probably what's going on we'll see in the next episode you know so because i doubt the fire nation is so so stupid that they would just like you know like not take any countermeasures on the one and only weakness they have that is the eclipse so i'm sure they have something planned we'll see in the next episode and here another thing we got got to see in this episode was zuko him i don't know what he's planning he kind of wrote a letter to um like at the beginning i thought it was for iro but then i realized that no it was for mai you know he wrote a letter and you know, left it with mai and said that i'm sorry and took like you know he also like in front of his mom's picture he was like I'm sorry it took me so long to actually realize what's right and what's wrong and he takes up some kind of a bag and i don't know what he's going to do now is he like planning to leave the fire nation i think so or maybe he I, or maybe he's thinking about breaking iroh out maybe he's thinking about that you know because i doubt he'll leave iroh here you know so if he's actually planning on leaving the fire nation I'm sure he'll try to, like, you know, break out Iro, and Iro is also trying to, like, I think so, like, also planning to break out. So, yeah, we'll see. So yeah, that was it. That was this episode. Um, and this is episode number nine and ten of Avatar: The Last Airbender, episode uh, book three. So yeah, we kind of like you know stopped in a weird section because, as I said, like, in episode ten we are in the part one of the invasion and the next week i'll start with part two of the invasion so it's kind of like a weird way but I, like i thought they're probably going to like you know put some cliffhanger or something at the end of episode one but there's no cliffhanger it's just like a weird section where angels gets in and he sees that 
the place is empty. So yeah, so we'll we can resume from the next episode and see what's actually going on. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed these two episodes, be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, and I'll definitely check them out. That's it. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of After the Last Airbender. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.